Hi, this is Pratima and you are watching Planet Physiology. Today we shall discuss MCQs on General Physiology. Let's begin with the basic questions. Golgi complex is an organelle. Options are A. Participates in breakdown of proteins and lipids. B. Post-translational processing of proteins. C. Energy production and D. Transcription and translation. So, this is a question from MGR University, May 2022. It's a simple question. Correct answer is B. Post-translational processing of proteins. Another MCQ from MGR University. Regression of tissues as in uterine regression after pregnancy is function of A. Nucleus B. Lysosomes C. Secretory vesicles and D. Peroxisomes Yes, another simple question. Correct answer is lysosomes. Uterine regression after the delivery is brought about by the process called autolysis. Next question. Microfilaments are solid fibers made up of A. Actin B. Tibulin C. Titan and D. Myosin Microfilaments are solid cytoskeletal elements made up of actin. So, option A is the answer. Microtubules are hollow structures and they are made up of alpha and beta tubulin. Intermediate filaments are made up of several proteins. Titan is present in skeletal muscle which is the protein connecting Z lines and the M lines. They keep myosin filaments in place. Next question. The term homeostasis is coined by A. W. B. Cannon B. Cloud Barnard C. Starling and D. William Harvey Yes, it is Walter B. Cannon, the American scientist who has coined the term homeostasis. Cloud Barnard is a French physiologist and he has coined the term milieu interior which means internal environment and it refers to extracellular fluid. Starling has coined the term hormone and William Harvey has put forth theory of blood circulation. Another simple MCQ. Blood clotting is an example for A. Positive feedback B. Negative feedback C. Delayed negative feedback and D. Adaptive control The correct answer is positive feedback mechanism. Other examples of positive feedback include parturition, LH search and generation of action potential. Next question. Low impedance electrical pathways through which electrical activity can be passed are called A. Adherence junction B. Desmosomes C. Gap junctions and D. Tight junctions Yes, the correct answer is gap junctions. The junctions are abundant in cardiac muscle and they are also found in single unit smooth muscles. They allow passage of ions and small molecules, so help in rapid conduction of impulses from one cell to the next cell. And because of gap junctions, the tissues act as syncytium. Another question related to gap junction. Protein subunit that lines up gap junctions are A. Cloudin B. Connexin C. Occludin and D. Actin So, gap junctions are made up of proteins called connexons which in turn is made up of six subunits each called as connexin. So, correct answer is B. Connexin. Tight junctions are made of cloudins and occludins while zona adherence and desmosomes are formed by cadherins. Focal adhesions contain integrins and are associated with actin. Next question. Which of the following attaches cells to the basal lamina? A. Zona occludens B. Desmosomes C. Hemidesmosomes and D. Claudin Yes, the correct answer is C. Hemidesmosome Another junction that attaches cells to the basal lamina is focal adhesion. Next question again from MGR. Part of cell membrane which limits the movement of water-soluble substances. A. Protein portion B. 
polysaccharide portion, C lipid portion, and D membrane enzymes. Yes, very easy question. The answer is C lipid portion. Next question. What is the probable structure of pores in the cell membrane? A. A protein molecule entrapped in the membrane. B. A phospholipid molecule entrapped in the membrane. C. A large polysaccharide molecule entrapped in the membrane. And D. A slit in the membrane. And the correct answer is option A. A protein molecule entrapped in the membrane. As you can note here, all these are protein molecules within the lipid bilayer. Some are transcellular protein and some are extrinsic proteins. Coming to the next question. Osmotic pressure of a solution is related to A. Number of particles dissolved in a solution B. Size and type of particles C. Chemical composition of the solution and D. Number of equivalents of an electrolyte in the solution Okay, the correct answer is option A. Number of particles dissolved in the solution so, it is the concentration of solution in terms of number of particles that is the molar concentration that decides the osmotic pressure and not the size or the mass or the chemical composition of the solution. The unit used to express concentration of solution in terms of number of particles is osmoles and not the grams. So, we often say milliosmoles per liter. Next question. Active transport processes Statements are A. Are often referred as pumps. B. Are most used processes to move substances through the cell membrane. C. Always use the energy obtained from transport of other substances. And D. Help transport of substances across the cell membrane along the electrochemical gradient. The correct answer is option A. Active transport processes are often referred as pumps. Most transport across cell membrane happens by passive mechanisms, which is along the electrochemical gradient. And hence, option B and D cannot be the answer. Since option C uses the word always, it is not the correct answer. Because primary active transport process utilizes ATP directly, and hence, the statement C is applicable only for secondary active transport, not for primary. Next question. A large part of basal metabolism is due to A. Flow of large molecules through membrane channels by facilitated diffusion. B. The phenomenon of osmosis. C. Sodium dependent secondary active transport. And D. Operation of sodium potassium pump. The correct answer is option D, operation of sodium potassium pump. Sodium potassium pump pumps 3 sodium out and 2 potassium into the cell by utilizing ATP and is concerned with regulation of cell volume. Since this pump is present in each and every cell, it consumes about one third of the total ATP in resting person. In excitable tissues like nerve and muscle, Sodium potassium pump consumes about 60 to 70 percent of the cell's energy to restore the ionic composition after impulse generation. Can because we are talking about sodium potassium pump and I have mentioned it pumps 3 sodium out and 2 potassium into the cell, it is said that coupling ratio of this pump is 3 is to 2. Sodium potassium ATPs helps in maintenance of which of the following? A. Intracellular pH B. Cell volume C. Low extracellular sodium and D. High extracellular potassium So, just now we have seen sodium potassium pump is used to maintain cell volume. So, correct answer is option B. Cell volume Ok, the next related question Normal cell volume and pressure depends on A. Gibbs Donans effect B. Operation of sodium potassium pump C. Asymmetrical distribution of ions across the cell membrane and D. Presence of more osmotically active particles in the cell Okay, this question is related to previous one 
so cell volume and pressure both are maintained because of sodium potassium pump activity so it is observed that whenever cell volume increases due to any reason activity of sodium potassium pump also increases it promotes removal of excess of water from the cell and thus maintains cell volume and thereby cell pressure next question simple diffusion differs from facilitated diffusion through a membrane in that simple diffusion a does not follow saturation kinetics b is a carrier mediated process c is an active process and d occurs only across selectively permeable membrane okay and here answer is it does not follow saturation kinetics saturation kinetics or vmax is applicable only for carrier mediated transport that is to the active transport and to the facilitated diffusion next question hyperosmolar coma is associated with a cellular overhydration b increased colloidal osmotic pressure of the interstitial fluid c cellular dehydration and d increased hydrostatic pressure of plasma and correct answer over here is cellular dehydration hyperosmolar that means there is increase in osmolarity of the extracellular fluid and this increase osmolarity causes exosmosis resulting into cellular dehydration and cellular dehydration of neuron results into coma next question a decrease in extracellular concentration of calcium causes a decreased excitability b hyperpolarization c decreased membrane stability and d decreased membrane permeability to sodium yes correct answer over here is option c decreased membrane stability calcium ions are called as membrane stabilizers they keep voltage gated sodium channels in inactivated state thus prevent unnecessary stimulation of excitable tissues whenever there is hypocalcemia that is decreased calcium levels in the body fluid voltage gated sodium channels cannot be maintained in closed state and this increases excitability of the nerve fiber leading to tetany which is also called as hypocalcemic tetany next question a small calcium binding protein that modifies the activity of many enzymes and other proteins in response to changes in calcium concentration is known as a cyclin b calmodulin c collagen and d kinesin yes it is calmodulin calmodulin can bind four calcium ions and calcium calmodulin interaction activates calmodulin dependent kinases leading to smooth muscle contraction synaptic transmission protein synthesis or activation of t lymphocytes depending upon the kinase that is being activated other calcium binding proteins are troponin and cal binding now let us see some questions on body fluid compartment topic the total blood volume is approximately a 8% of the body weight b 15% of the body weight c 25% of the body weight and d 30% of the body weight and the answer is option a 8% of the body weight which is nothing but 80 ml per kg next question synovial intraocular and pericardial fluids are examples of a lymph b interstitial fluid c transcellular fluid and d intracellular fluid okay all of you are aware of the term lymph interstitial fluid and intracellular fluid transcellular fluid constitutes less than 1% of extracellular fluid and it includes fluids in the lumen of the structures lined by epithelial cells for example fluids in git cerebrospinal fluid pleural fluid pericardial fluid intraocular fluid synovial fluid etc so correct answer is c transcellular fluid next question indicator used to measure plasma volume is a d2o that is deuterium oxide b inulin c evans blue dye and d 
radioactive sodium correct answer is c evans blue dye which is also known as t1h24 as it binds with albumin the dye is confined to vascular compartment only and hence it is used to measure plasma volume d2o is heavy water and used to measure total body water as it readily mixes in intracellular as well as extracellular fluid inulin and radioactive sodium both are used to measure extracellular fluid volume as both of them equilibrate well in plasma as well as interstitial fluid and does not enter the cell so here the answer is evans blue next question based on same knowledge d2o and inulin are injected in a normal person volume of distribution of d2o is found to be 42 liters and that of inulin 14 liters the icf volume is okay just now as we have seen d2o gives you value of total body water and inulin that of extracellular fluid hence subtracting these two gives you volume of intracellular fluid so 42 minus 14 equal to 28 liters so icf volume is 28 liters next question dehydration develops more rapidly and is frequently more severe in children than adults because in children options are a ecf volume to icf volume ratio is smaller ecf to icf volume ratio is same total body water is larger d total extracellular fluid volume is smaller the correct answer is option d total extracellular fluid volume is smaller in children actually if you see the ratio of extracellular to intracellular fluid volume it is higher in children but the total quantity of extracellular fluid volume itself is less and hence even the smaller loss of fluid leads to rapid and severe dehydration in children next question standard unit for expressing the solutes in the body which are in the form of charged particle is a moles b equivalent c osmoles and d millimole okay here the correct answer is option b equivalent many of the solutes in the body are in the form of charged particles and hence the concept of electrical equivalence is important in physiology hence unit use is equivalent one equivalent is equal to one mole of ionized substance divided by its valency okay the last question of the session the physiologically important anion other than chloride is options are a nitrate b phosphate c bicarbonate and d sulfate the correct answer is option c bicarbonate bicarbonate concentration in the extracellular fluid is 28 mL per liter chloride is 103 mL per liter so the next important anion in the extracellular fluid is bicarbonate ions and they play very important role in acid base regulation or maintaining ph of the body fluids so that's all for today thank you for watching and see you in the next video if you enjoy my presentations press the like button and share it with your friends for more such videos subscribe my channel and click the bell icon thank you for watching and see you in the next video